All right, we have multiple pressing stories to get to. Stories that include Donald Trump making history last night, announcing Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy will lead up the Department of Government Efficiency, officially known as Doge. That's so awesome. To permanently and completely drain the swamp, gut the federal bureaucracy, and now costs over $6 trillion a year. This will be legendary. And then 30 minutes later, announces his new Secretary of Defense, nominating Pete, Heg Pete Hegseth, which I know for a fact, by the way, was not on his list of approved choices. We've been worried about this pick for the last week, but this is solid. I'm going to explain why. We have the details. And look, anyone who is outside the system, normal, salt-of-the-earth Americans, that's what we want. This is the closest we've seen in the last century of returning our government to civilian control. People coming in with fresh eyes who have zero loyalty to the hydra that our government's become. And wait until you see how the media is reacting to all this. MS, NBC losing their freaking minds. They've been pushing for, attempting to manipulate the transition team to hire someone like Mike Rogers or Mike Pompeo. And wouldn't they have loved that? We also have an update for you on Tony Hinckliffe, Kill Tony, the comedian who almost took down Trump's presidency by accident at Madison Square Garden at no fault of his own. Wait till you see this. And more stories from around the country, what's happening in New York City, for example. We have all of it. But before we get started, thank you for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps out the channel. And consider subscribing so you don't miss these regular updates. Ministerio de Turismo y Deporte, afuera. Ministerio de Cultura, afuera. Ministerio de Ambiente y Desarrollo Sostenible, afuera. Ministerio de las Mujeres y Género y Diversidad, afuera. Ministerio de Obras Públicas, afuera. Aunque te resistas. Ministerio de Ciencia y Tecnología e Innovación, afuera. Ministerio de Trabajo, Empleo y Seguridad Social, afuera. Ministerio de Educación, Adoctrinamiento, afuera. Ministerio de Transporte, afuera. Ministerio de Salud, afuera. Ministerio de Desarrollo Social, afuera. Se acabó el curro de la política. ¡Viva la libertad, carajo! That, of course, is Javier Mille, president of Argentina. Remember, afuera. This is what only in my dreams I could think up as the way to rein all of this in. And it's happening. What Trump's calling the next Manhattan Project, a secret or semi-secret, under-the-radar, tiny group of small government revolutionaries will work to disband the beast that's become our federal government. Donald Trump announcing last night Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy to head up the doge. How awesome is that? The Department of Government Efficiency to officially and permanently drain the swamp. This is revolutionary. This could be historic. And both of these men are the perfect people to head this up. Vivek a libertarian, someone like me who believes in small government, someone who understands the mechanics of how government works, and Elon Musk who can execute almost anything. Realize our government spent over $6 trillion last year. They're spending over a trillion a year now on interest alone, thanks to Joe Biden, just to service our national debt. For the last century, the brainiacs in Washington thought the only way out of this mess was to tax us even more. American citizens should pay zero tax. It was only like a hundred years ago or something like that that Americans even started paying federal taxes. Before that, the entire federal government was funded from tariffs and taxes on goods, sales tax. Why do you think Trump loves the word tariff so much? And social media is going wild over this. Some of the memes taking over the internet Elon Musk is Ari Gold from Entourage. See if you can read this. You're fired. And in case your ears are fucked, get the fuck out. Oh, that's awesome. Vivek reposting and saying, we will not go gently, Elon Musk. Here's Vivek two days ago explaining how him and Elon will actually do this. Roll the tape. You got to get rid of the presence of the people who populate that bureaucracy. But in order to do that, you need this industrial logic. And that industrial logic, in my opinion, is what the Supreme Court has already given us, 
which is this mandate to say the executive branch, the fake executive branch, the administrative state, has written all these rules by fiat. Most of them are illegal, like they're actually unlawful. They're illegitimate. And so if you have an executive branch that says, okay, we're going to recognize that most of these regulations are illegitimate, there's your blueprint for then shaving down the size of the federal bureaucracy, which is then the permanent solution to stop that bureaucracy from perpetuating this kind of illegal rampant action. And I think that's the stuff of how you actually save a country. Boring as that might sound. It's not boring. And I think um, I, I've never heard in all the, you know, my whole life in Washington, anybody suggest that this is a process that could really be stalled or reversed. The process being the growth of the federal government, mm-hmm. which is just inexorable because mm-hmm. the purpose of the institution is to protect protect itself and expand. That's the it's whole, like a law of physics that's that's applied it. to this it. government. Every yeah. institution exists to protect itself for its own benefit. That's its purpose. And it's demonstrable in its behavior. So, um, but I, it's it's so obvious, it's so overwhelming. It's the largest institution in human history. I've never heard anybody say, you know, we have a shot of like lopping off 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%. 80%, like never, yeah. That, I mean, that would change everything from our yeah. foreign policy to our economy, to our culture. Um, you really think that's that could happen? Yeah. I think it could happen. Then on top of this, Trump tapped Pete Hegseth to be the next Secretary of Defense, a position I've been super worried about and was shocked to hear him choose Pete for this job, namely because I knew the list of candidates he was given and Pete wasn't on it. Nobody like him was on it, even though they should have been. Pete's an active reservist. He still holds a security clearance, war veteran, multiple combat deployments, two bronze stars, but most importantly, he's from outside the system. He's a freaking cable news host. This is the definition of civil, of civilian control of our military. And the left-wing legacy media machine is breaking down, losing their freaking minds over this. The former and future president is moving quickly to fill the clown car and round out his cabinet before he changes his mind and fires them all. <laughs> Moments ago, Trump announced that he has selected Fox Weekend Morning Show host, you can't make this up, Pete, Pete Hegseth, to serve as Secretary of Defense. Trump also tapped two of his favorite cheerleaders, Vivek Ramaswamy and Elon Musk, to head his new Department of Government Efficiency, or DOGE. Trump claims the new department will dismantle government bureaucracy, slash excess regulations, and cut wasteful expenditures, all in the name of making government more efficient. Because nothing says government efficiency like tapping two people to do one person's job. Confidence in the current leadership of the Pentagon and the way the defense situation has been operating for the last several years. I mean, from the Afghanistan pullout, which was an extreme debacle for which no one was held accountable, We've had spy balloons flying over the United States. We built a $300 million pier as a public relations stunt, which wound up killing an American service member. I'd say I've had just about enough of the so-called insiders running the Defense Sorry, Department. I think you, we ought to give Pete Hicks at the chance. You because think that's he's got, about, he's about got insiders? Two, I, 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 all the criticism of him is that he's not the expected Washington pick. And I'm just saying to you, that the American people just voted against the expected Washington pick. So I, he's got 20 years in service, Afghanistan, Iraq, two bronze stars, Princeton, Harvard. Yeah, he's on TV, but so are the rest of us. I, by the and, way, and, and, that listen you I, just, I just gave, I think, I think he that listen you just gave is really interesting because you highlighted a bunch of things that the civilian leadership of the country decided on in the military their job was just to execute. They they executed. How did it go? I, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just I mean, saying. How did it go? In terms of the decision making, you're assigning decision making uh, responsibility to the military over things that civilians are responsible no, I, for. So so uh, you make a good point. The civilian leadership made decisions, and then the people they put in charge of the Pentagon carried it out, and it was all pretty much a disaster. So the old broken down legacy media machine, they can throw all the tantrums that they want. It no longer matters does make good television, though. Their wheels are falling off. Ratings at all left-leaning outlets continue to plummet. Since election night, total daily viewership for MSNBC has fallen 54%. CNN lost 26%, while Fox News remains steady. And it's not just viewership. We learned yesterday CNN's parent company is reportedly getting ready to axe top stars at the network, including an additional 500 layoffs that are coming. And sources say Warner Brothers wants a complete remake of the network, gut it down to studs, and start over. 
Good riddance. Chris Wallace just resigned from CNN. Comcast looking to spin off looking to spin off MSNBC now. Nielsen ratings just released the viewership numbers for each demo. MSDNC viewership has dropped by half since Trump's victory. Look at this. These numbers reflect an average from last Wednesday to Friday. That marks a 54% decrease in the network's viewership average in the month of October, as well as a 51% decrease in the network's year-to-date 2024 average. Additionally, on Friday, MSNBC saw 636,000 viewers and 61,000 in the demo, making it the network's lowest-rated non-holiday night of the year. And why do you think that's happening? Could it be because Americans just don't trust you? You've lied to your viewers for years, and now they know this, telling them that Trump's Hitler before the election, but after admitting, oh, none of that was true. It was all just politics. Here's Brian Stelter and Abby Phillips on CNN explain to their viewers that tanking public trust in them isn't their fault. Instead, it's your fault. It's their viewers' fault. You can't make this up. Roll the tape. But I, I want to recognize that for all the flaws of the, the mainstream media, and we have a lot of them, it's not just the media's fault that trust has been declining for decades. It's also I mean, decades of attacks by politicians. That is the main and, yeah. issue, is that, like, I mean, yeah, it could be that the Washington Post is endorsing candidates, or it could be that there are millions of voters who believe lying politicians who tell them lies, knowing, knowing that they are. I mean, that could be the problem, too. In another story, the mayors of sanctuary cities around the country, such as Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, Boston, New York, and the governors of those states are being told to come out and vow to not cooperate with ICE and Trump's new border czar, Tom Omen, to deport dangerous criminal aliens. Now, most of these mayors have fallen in line, but the most important of these cities, the city that never sleeps, the Big Apple, is bucking the trend, coming out yesterday to say he will do whatever he can to help deport the illegal migrants in his city. That New York City is no longer a sanctuary city, apparently. And it's not just him. It seems like this TDS, this Trump derangement syndrome fever, is starting to break. Watch. And as you communicate with President-elect Trump and have communicated with him, will you express concern about mass deportations in the city? Uh, uh, my concern is one concern, and we keep tinkering around the edges. We keep having this philosophical conversation about it. Our, the voters communicated loudly and clearly. We have a broken immigration system. It needs to be fixed. That's the only conversation I want. It's broken. It needs to be fixed. And New York City was devastated by that broken system. 220,000 migrants and asylum seekers have made their way here. No financial assistance from uh, the administration. I think it was um, about 200 and something million dollars with billions of dollars we had to pay for. I don't want to see that happen again. I don't want what's taking place in Chicago and Denver, Los Angeles, uh, Houston. I don't want to see it take place again. Let's fix our immigration system. Anything other than that, I'm not interested in that conversation. We have a broken system. I talked about this in 2022, just as I talked about violence in 2021, and voters made this the top of their list, the top of their list. When I was talking about it, everyone was just being dismissive of me, and voters said, this is a problem. All right, that wraps up this episode. Like, subscribe. We'll see you next time.